In today's Face Off, Tamron, the growing pressure on President Obama to make a decision on the future of the American involvement in Afghanistan. Yeah, David, just today the BBC is reporting the president's top commander in Afghanistan, General Stanley McChrystal, is, quote, fuming. McChrystal is said to be angry about U.S. Ambassador Carl Eikenberry's cables, wire cables, to the White House this week, questioning the wisdom of sending more U.S. troops to the region without evidence that Afghan President Hamid Karzai has a grip on corruption and the drug trade in his country. The president is not happy with any of the options he's heard so far and has ordered his top advisors to come with a plan that includes a clear mission and an exit strategy. And here to face off, Mark Walsh, Democratic strategist and co-host of Left Jab on Sirius XM Satellite Radio. Also with us, Republican strategist Alex Kona. Thank you both for joining us. So, Alex, I'll start off with you because we've seen a lot of uh, Republicans be very vocal about uh, the immediate need to bring troops or send troops to Afghanistan. And you've got some observation from a decorated military official, now the ambassador in Kabul, saying, hang on here, this is not a credible government. We want to make sure that they are serious about this corruption. What's your response to that? Well, I think this is what happens when the president needlessly drags out the internal debate on what to do in Afghanistan. It's been about three months now since uh, his commander on the ground there requested additional troops, and he has yet to respond to that request and said he's taking a very long time, I would argue a needlessly long time, to, to, to make a decision. And the end result of that is that you have internal debate spilling out into the public. Ultimately, that's going to undermine his final decision well, because he's going to go the against public. it. So, Alex, you would have preferred for the president, even with that government there, a time up in drugs and corruption to send young men and women over uh, three months ago. No, I think that the governor. I think that the president needs to make a decision on whether or not to send additional troops to Afghanistan. Right now, with the de facto policy is the status quo, which everybody admits, everybody agrees to, is a failed strategy. We need a new strategy, Jer. The strategy in, in Afghanistan. That's the White House's responsibility to develop, and they've so far failed to do that. And as a result, you have all these internal disputes spilling out into the public, which is going to undermine the long-term case for the war in Afghanistan, regardless of what the president ends up deciding to do. Mark, let me get you to respond to that. Well, I'm always amused to hear people on the right say that President Obama isn't acting fast enough in Afghanistan when last time I checked for eight years his, his predecessor did nothing in Afghanistan that was productive at all. So I think every day he takes his time is a good day, number one. Number two, whether it spills into the public debate is really not the issue of the president. That's leaks and that's people like us talking about it on TV. And number three, to take the advice of the ambassador who's on the ground and not just listen to a general. When you ask a general if he needs more troops, guess what they say? Yes. So the ambassador, who himself is a former Major General is saying that we perhaps have no way to win in Afghanistan. Look, since Alexander the Great, people have been losing in Afghanistan. There's no democracy possibility there. So I think Obama's doing the exact right thing by waiting and asking for new options. Mark, I want to ask you a topic, too, here as far as how President Obama is doing on the economy. Here's what he said today about the report on first-time uh, unemployment benefits. The requests are fewer than a lot of analysts expected. That's a good sign. But here's what the president said. The economy is now growing again for the first time in more than a year and faster than at any time in the past two years. But even though we've slowed the loss of jobs, and today's report on the continued decline in unemployment claims is a hopeful sign, the economic growth that we've seen has not yet led to the job growth that we desperately need. And so what he said, Mark, is that he's going to have a job summit in December to try to figure out what to do next. Smart policy, or should he actually take action and simply say, all right, we know what the problem is, let's take some steps? Well, it's difficult to say specifically what the problem is. At the meta level, it's obvious that banks are not lending as robustly as people expected them by now. Remember, bank liquidity is the grease that wheels the, uh, for the wheels of commerce. And I think that banks and the liquidity that they now have are not being introduced more rapidly in, into the economy to show that companies can get credit and then hire more people, number one. Number two, there's a chance that there will be what they call the new normal, which is a, uh, an, un an unemployment level that is far higher than many uh, administrations before Obama has ever seen before that may last for a very long time. That's because our economy is effectively shrinking. Demand is shrinking at the consumer and business level. We have to understand that. I, I think Obama's summit is a good idea because fresh ideas come from fresh perspectives. And unlike prior administrations, this is a way to look for fresh ideas. He has to do that. Alex? As be it the, the deficit, then they had a fiscal responsibility summit after his uh, his remarks about the uh, the incident up in Cambridge with the cop and the African American professor. He had a beer summit. Now we've got j bad jobs numbers. We're having a job summit. I think we need a fewer summits and more action out of the White House. Less talk, more doing.
Uh, okay, so in other words, perhaps, Al, uh, Alex, you would agree then that maybe the stimulus should have been bigger because that would have uh, saved more jobs, right? Well, no, I don't think, I think the stimulus failed because it was more government spending when what we needed was more direct tax relief, more things that would actually get the economy going in the private sector, not the public sector. The public sector so far is failing to create all the millions of jobs that the that the White House promised with the stimulus. They promised in the neighborhood of four or five million jobs. I, they I said we continue to lose jobs. Well, and we I continue to lose disagree. jobs with the stimulus. Just to be absolutely clear, Mark, Walsh, I'll let you respond. Isn't it true when somebody gets a tax cut, you've got no guarantee they're actually going to spend that money in the economy. They can stick it in the bank. They can put it under their mattress. But you've got no guarantee it will actually go to creating jobs, right? Again, again, Alex, respectfully, I am amazed at how the right wing responds to anything that's going on in this administration economically. The answer is always tax cuts. And I think to David's <laughs> point, and to many people besides David, no, but, the point but to say the tax cut is, is the way to fix it. Let me, let, me, let me finish. Let me finish. The Please. point to say the tax cuts is what this president should be doing as opposed to stimulus. Number one, I think is a failed strategy. Number two, to say the stimulus is a failure is not only premature, I think it's factually incorrect. The stimulus has generated economic activity that has saved us from the brink of a disaster that is 70 years in the making. So to sit there and say the stimulus has <laughs> failed and the president is not acting, I think that just doesn't match with reality. Mark, Alex, I, I thank think you, you both I think very you leave much. The We're out of time. We greatly appreciate it, gentlemen. And next time we'll Thanks, guys. hopefully have more time for you. It was a great conversation. Thanks. Thanks.